And now we take a look at career support for women in the field of ID with the Women in ID Breakfast and the Art and Science of Being an ID Chameleon Session. We started the Women in ID Breakfast back in 2015 when we were in San Diego. It came out of a work between Chris Bryan and Wendy Armstrong and the need to have women come up, especially in looking for a job, how to do negotiations, how to, you know, even microaggressions at work, and to start a networking activity. It actually blossomed in 2019, uh, where we started, we overflow a, a, a whole ballroom, and then they realized the power that we had. Um, it's a way we're role models. There's more women in ID. We're almost 51%. There's been an equity, um, a JID article in 2016, we were less women, uh, for example, in the conference, in the program committee, in awards, and there's been an intentionality to have more women there. And that has paid uh, with the current numbers that we have, that is like 50%. This year, we have an amazing uh, program where the four chairs are women. And this morning, we have women in ID. And for ID Buckboat, we have, we have the ID girl on the theme of Barbie. So the art and science of it is that all of us as ID physicians have an incredible skill set that oftentimes we don't realize how widely it spans. We know we're going to take care of patients who do or may, or have, uh, may have or have an infectious disease, but we learn so many other skills in our training and in our daily work with patients. We learn about treatment, we learn about prevention, we learn about how systems work and we learn about leadership as well. And um, to be a chameleon to me is realizing all of those different hats that we can wear, choosing the ones that give us the most um, excitement and really making that become your passion with your everyday work. Yeah, so I think one of the things that's really critical is to think about the fact that you can have an impact in many different ways and that you can have an impact in academic medicine through teaching, through mentoring, through research, and also obviously through patient care. But I think in terms of thinking more broadly about a career, there's other ways to have um, an impact. And that can be through industry and thinking about how do you affect broad swaths of populations if you can have help develop medications that could help a lot of people. Yeah, I think, you know, healthcare is probably pretty late to the game as far as incorporating coaching in faculty development and the overall wellness and well-being of their employees. So it's really something that I think is a burgeoning field. So there's two ways we can look at it. One is what are coaching services that are being offered to women in ID, women in medicine, um, and not even just women, but you know minorities and other individuals who are experiencing challenges in the workplace. Um, so that's one thing to think about. And then the other part is that for those who want to explore more, what are some avenues to be able to learn more about how to become a coach so that then being in the field and being a coach kind of have an inside perspective onto those unique challenges um, and experiences that people are going through. It's sitting back thinking about what expertise we have to offer to people in the hospital, in healthcare, and way beyond healthcare as well. And that's where our knowledge can help people beyond what we would ever think. Really thinking about what it is you want, what is your why, so what drives you, what brings you fulfillment, what makes you happy, and then really starting to go and chase that. One is, you know, is be intentional, be there, be a mentor, be a sponsor. So one of the things this year is sponsor her and invest in her so we can be stronger and ever better.